Talk lines are open now at 314-969-9797 or toll free at 866-455-9797. You're listening to The Dana Show. Very disappointing ruling here from the Sixth Circuit Court in Cincinnati. This has been a a, a long-going battle, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around how they approached this conclusion. Uh, The PDF is available online of uh, of the opinion, and they really went after the Commerce Clause. The sentence that gets me the most, and our friend Patrico, patrico patrico.com, has it up on his website as well. The sentence that that, that gets me the most, the activity of foregoing health insurance and attempting to cover the cost of health care needs by self, attempting to cover the cost of health care needs by self-insuring is no less economic than the activity of purchasing an insurance plan. So according to their this opinion, there's no such thing as inactivity when they want to invoke the Commerce Clause. One of the most bizarre things I've ever read, and joining me right now is Missouri's own Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder, who was the first to file suit against the unconstitutional health control bill now law. Uh, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank good. you for having me back on to of discuss course. this really vital issue. Dana. Well, thanks for joining me. This this was really bizarre because they're essentially saying that inactivity is a form of economic activity. What do you make of yes. this? Yes, we're, we're into Alice in Wonderland legal reasoning, and it's uh, really disappointing that federal judges would use that. Uh, the The standard apparently is a word can mean whatever I choose it to mean, and uh, it's a real travesty. But Dana, what this this uh, disappointing decision does. Uh, by one of the uh, 12 circuit courts of appeal, which is the only rung below the U.S. Supreme Court. What it does really is heighten the importance and the centrality of my constitutional challenge that we filed in July of last year, almost a year ago, and that is now in the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Louis. And uh, we like our chances in the 8th Circuit, Dana. Because let me tell you how misbegotten and how just how wrong-headed that that ruling is yeah. on the individual mandate. Uh, a little little bit of a history lesson here, back to our elementary school days, where we discussed, where we learned the American history prior to the Revolution. So it's 1774, and we had the British Parliament passing the Stamp Act, which American colonists objected to mm-hmm. and said we can't have this, and we're And they also passed a series of acts that American colonists came to call the Intolerable Act. Right. Well, what what did the colonists, uh, uh, how did they respond, specifically legally? They responded with a boycott of British goods. Right. That is, we refuse to buy your British goods. Well, shoot, if you're sitting in the king or the parliament, the only reason to have colonies is to buy and sell stuff. So, So this was a real affront to British rule. And the legal advisor to the king and parliament said to the king and to parliament, the American colonists are within their rights in refusing to buy British goods. They're within their rights with this boycott. So fast forward 234 years to last year. We have an Obama-Pelosi-Reed-led Congress passing a law requiring American citizens for the first time in the history of our country to buy a product in the private marketplace and thus asserting that they have a power over American citizens that the King of England did not have over us when we were his subjects. Wow. Wow. Well, I I, I just, it is, just as you said, it is definitely Alice in Wonderland reasoning here to think that somehow not uh, actively participating in the healthcare market somehow is, 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 economic activity. And I know that they desperately want, they have to have it defined as such so that they can make this work because that's why they took it through the IRS. They have to have this disguised as some sort of tax in order to, in order to pass it off. Is that correct? Absolutely. Now you should know that they're losing across the board with their dishonest argument that this is some form of a tax. If they know how to call something a tax in the legislative process. Right. They studiously avoided the use of, of the word tax in writing this law. Why? Because the Obama administration and the Congress, the Democratic majority in Congress that ran this through, did not want to say out in black and white in the open that they were raising taxes in this bill. 
Right. And so they avoided calling it a tax. And in fact, President Obama went on George Stephanopoulos' show, and, and, and George uh, pressed him on the point, and he denied that it was a tax and got angry about it. Okay? Now, after they pass it, then they defend it under the taxing power. Gosh. One judge after another has said this is cynical, it is dishonest, and it cannot stand. And they did not prevail uh, on the taxing argument, in this, even in this case where they upheld the constitutionality of the law. Uh, uh, Dana, we are full steam ahead with our appeal. We are being joined by friends of the court briefs, uh, the other states in the Eighth Circuit, which are uh, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, uh, Arkansas. And we like our chances on this appeal, which will be later this summer and this fall for oral argument. Wow. Well, we I we we have to. I would love to see some more traction on this. What? So this is so that's the next step. How soon uh, do you think? Because I I know at some point this is going to wind up before the Supreme Court. It's yes. gonna it's gonna wind up there next year. And it could be my case. <laughs> Yesterday's wow. ruling heightens the importance of my case, which is Kinder versus Geithner, Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim Geithner <laughs> and Kinder, Kinder versus Holder. And so we are not deterred. We are not. Uh, our chins are up. We're going ahead with this. We're excited about it. And we like our chances all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. I believe Justice Kennedy will come down on the side of freedom in this case. And, and his recent rulings, by the way, on some federalism issues just last week have bolstered that belief. Justice Kennedy is seeing... The states have a role in the federal scheme of things to maintain our liberty. Right. And I know and I know that there's a website that people can go to if they would like to donate, because this is really I mean, this is an individual effort. This isn't some sort of like governmental effort. This is an individual effort. All support is needed because this is really a case that benefits everybody. What's that? What is the website? Right. Our t- our, it's teamkinder.com dot com. And uh, I'm sorry, healthcare in action dot com. Either one of those. OK. Healthcare in action dot com. Perfect. Thank you so much for all that you do, Lieutenant Thank Governor so Peter much. Kinder. If we don't prevail here, this is going to wreck Missouri's budget. They're sticking Missouri taxpayers with the bill. Oh, absolutely. Well, we appreciate your efforts. Thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank Take you, care. Dana. All right, folks, we have more of your calls on the way. And plus, you know, I don't really share like a lot of personal stories and stuff like that because I'm usually like, foaming at the mouth about some of the political news. But my husband recently had a surprise birthday party. We have a, a odd kind of relationship, and in terms of we like to play practical jokes on each other a lot. And I, compl- I mean, I completely punked him out last weekend, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you how I did that. And we have your calls today and stupidity on the way as well. Keep it here. It's the Dana Show.